Well, hello. Welcome to another Facebook Live. Here on Facebook, Shower Door Pros Group. Yeah, every Wednesday evening at 5.30 Pacific time, we meet up here to talk about shower doors, shower door business, and all of the fun stuff that entails. So uh, if you want to join us, you can here in the Zoom room. Just go ahead and click the link there in the description of the event, in the Facebook page group there thing, whatever, and come on in. I will allow you to enter the room. And uh, if you don't want to come in, you can always add your comments in there, questions, stuff like that. And we'll see if we can come up with some answers for you. So, uh, hey, how you guys doing? Who's working on something that's fun and exciting this week? Well, I was on vacation this week, so just going back to work tomorrow. Dude, tell me about your vacation. <laughs> Took a trip out to Nashville. Great city. We were supposed to bring the grandkids over to Pigeon Ford to see the Titanic Museum, but there was an occurrence there on Monday night, and we didn't make the trip because the iceberg collapsed and three people got sent to the hospital. <laughs> that was bizarre. <laughs> so we were supposed to be there Tuesday morning. Uh, we were in Nashville three hours away, and we decided not to make the three-hour trip just to find out it was closed down. So we didn't go. But had a great time in Nashville. Yeah. If you haven't been there, I, I highly suggest it. It's a fun place. Yeah, I haven't been there. And, you know, that's what I've always heard. I've heard it's, yeah, it's a fun It place. really is, especially if you like music. Whether you like country or not, there's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, I hear it's a big um, it's a big music town, not just country music, but all kinds of music. All kinds, yeah. That was fun, just to get away. It's nice. Well, congratulations on your vacation, man. I mean, you know. Nice to take something. Three days. It's hard sometimes <laughs> to do that. So the biggest challenge of all is just taking a break. Yeah, we flew on Sunday morning and came back this afternoon. So only three days, but it was good. Just enough. Yeah, see, Brandon popped in. I chatted with him a little bit earlier. He didn't quite think he was going to make it. Man, check him out. What a trooper. There we go. We got all the usual suspects. Yeah. We're just kind of, uh, you know, checking in here. Just curious to see if anybody is, you know, working on something, you know, unusual or something they're particularly proud of, want to crow about a little bit. I'm going to give you the opportunity to do that. We're, we're, uh, we're bidding about a quarter of a million dollar wine cellar in, in Beverly Hills called Steel and Glass. It's crazy. It's like a two-story room out of steel and glass that we're doing or we're bidding on. How did you get the opportunity to bid on that? Uh, through one of the uh, wine cellar companies we do work for. It does work all over the world. And we're yeah. Their, we're their partner. That. So we we get the opportunity for wherever it is if we want it. So now, can you do it, or do you got to sub it out? Because you're not licensed in California, right? No. So we'll we either sub it out, or uh, they're licensed, or we'll sub under them under their license. Um, so they're licensed for glass, or as a general contractor? They got a glass license as well. Yeah. So, oh, that's yeah. cool. Uh, in a couple of the major major states, so. Well, one of the things I was talking to Chris about this week via text is that I would love to see this group put together a list of references. So like a lot of people in Florida have second homes, sec or Florida is their second home. They may very well be from Asheville or Phoenix or somewhere else, but we should all be referring each other that, Definitely. you know, the guys that are consistently here, um, we could share leads with each other. I think it'd Definitely. be a really good little networking thing. Yeah, that's a good idea. You know, I think we all do glass railings, wine closets, office partitions, shower doors. So uh, instead of saying, no, I don't know anybody in Asheville or I don't know anybody in Virginia, at least we could, you know, 
give out the names of somebody in this group. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. So here's my idea on how to um, put together a list. I can um, start a poll in the group and I can leave the poll questions open so that people can add them. Yeah. So instead of using it as an actual poll, just say, hey, if you wanna be on this list of, of people that can be referred in other areas, just put the name of your company and a link to your website as one of the poll questions. And we'll just get a list together. And then anybody who wants to could just take that list of links and put it, you know, on a web page, you know, if they feel so inclined. Or they could just have it, you know, someplace offline where they keep it and you know can just send people that way. And if there's, you know, if there's a competitor in your area on the list, you can just leave their link off. But um, I think it'd be a great way to start just kind of networking like that. Because I do get have people, they'll find my blog and then they'll contact me and say, hey, I know you're not in my area, but do you know anybody who is? Because I really love to sound like you know what you're talking about and, you know, like to get somebody you know of. Well, Chris, I think that's what makes this group valuable and it's going to make it expand. And other guys start seeing this. They go, yeah, we need to be part of that. And that'll build this group and give us more strength. You know, we see the same usual people here every week. So it's good to come up with something different and let's, you know, do something beneficial with this group. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we need to, you know, just milk it for all that it's worth, you know, um, try to find every angle that's, that's going to be profitable for people to utilize it. You know, because we're here anyway. and. Why not? Yeah, absolutely. We should be doing that. So if you want to create that poll, I think that's a great idea. We can just add to it. Uh, but you might want to, you be the administrator and decide if there's people that, you know, maybe, you know, for one reason or another, shouldn't be involved in that. And that's all up to you as the administrator. Yeah, well, it might be a good idea for, you know, once they get that list put together for me to just contact each person, you know, and have a little chat and find out, you know, where yeah. they're at and what they're doing. And, you know, because I mean, it's, it's not really possible to just vouch for somebody you've never yeah. met. But I could tell a customer or a potential client, hey, this is somebody who's in our group. You know, we have this group of professionals and I know this person's in the group and you can contact them. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Yeah, you know. Well, I, gotta, I did that to, for you, Chris. I sent that lady. <laughs> yeah, lady right, exactly. Lady. <laughs> right, right. Well, you you know, you yeah. and I, we we actually, you know, do talk quite a bit like this. So, you know, yeah. there's like, I don't know, 1,500 people in the group. So there's a lot of people who I've never even you know, spoken to personally. But. Yeah. It's oh, really yeah. that big of a group, 1,500? 1,500 members, yeah, over that 1.5K, it says. Seriously. Mm. <laughs> Seems like a lot of um, shower door installers, huh? You think? And, you know, I really am pretty picky about who I let in. I mean, I, I, I make people answer, like, a two-question questionnaire. One is, like, what is your connection to the glass industry? And do you agree to follow the rules? And um, a lot of people don't answer one or both of those questions, and I just don't. I don't let them in. <laughs> but I still, wonder. is it because they can't? I don't. I don't know. But you know, it's like, hey, I mean, we've got fifteen hundred members. It's not like we're hurting for more numbers. Oh. So I mean, if a person isn't really willing just to go so far as answer those two questions, I think it's yeah. reasonable to think, yeah, they're not going to be a good number. Right. I get it. I agree but with that. Still, that said, we still have that many numbers. So, I mean, we I'm, we could easily be triple that, I'm sure, if we just let everybody in who was just curious. You know? Well, I was reading the questions that the guys were sending to you this week about supply chain issues. Uh, and I'm surprised the ones that asked the questions aren't on this post. So, or I mean, aren't on this conference. So I'm kind of wondering are they just watching the replay and want to see what we have to say about it? Or do they want any input on it? 
yeah, 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 that's a good question. I don't know if some people just uh, watch live. I mean, when it actually does stream live, it actually is. It looks like it actually is it streaming is, live today. It is streaming so live, cool. yeah. I saw the notification. Um, um, we actually yeah, got hit. We actually got hit with uh, uh, Starfire um, shortages, finally. So our our manufacturer, our our vendor in California, who we order from, is completely out, and they imported from Vitro out of Mexico, and Vitro hasn't even started making it. So. Oh wow! So now we're now we're now we're uh, offering Opti White as a solution to Starfire, which is really close. It's just a darker blue bluish purplish edge compared to the lighter color but and it's a little more expensive but it's still the option out there when you can't get starfire so hey you got to have some glass to be able to install yeah in uh, colorado the supply chain to colorado old castle in colorado is eight weeks out on a shower door are you kidding me yeah so i i Luckily, I have a little bit of pool with a larger manufacturer out of Colorado that will sh run a truck up to Colorado for us for a flat rate. Um, trying to work that deal out right now because, but you got to have enough shower doors on a truck every two weeks to make it worthwhile. But if we can put 50 shower doors, I mean, we're, we'll average like 40, 40 to 50 shower doors every two weeks for them, which makes sense. We'll be paying a little bit more but our lead times will be better and we can get like, how do you tell someone they have to wait eight to 10 weeks for a shower door? Like we literally got a confirmation in Colorado for a splash panel that was seven weeks out for a single panel. Wow. Brandon, you could come drive here. I'll make it for you. And you can bring it back in two days. Serious. And it probably, <laughs> and I, I would be able to do all that and still make better lead times, you know? Exactly. <laughs> crazy like it's been like that oh since we opened up in colorado it's been a nightmare out there and they have old castle true light blaze tech uh agulite um and then i think national down there but like it's just it's crazy like the lead times and the quality out there wow agulite wow. i don't know how agulite's in business with the quality they had with their but i just got an email that they buy all weather tempering here in arizona um, their facility out here. So I don't know. I don't know. Crazy. Chris, out of the shower door professionals, how many people here are actual uh, work for fabricators? For fabricators? Um, I don't know. That's a like good question. Anybody from Old Castle, Agulate, any of those companies uh, involved as membership here? Um. I don't know of anybody from those particular companies that you just mentioned. I mean, I know that we have people from like Cardinal. I know that we have people from um, Contractors Coastal. Wardrobe. Coastal. 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 Um, yeah, and you know, don't see don't see a lot of them, but you know, I don't know. It's like I'm here on the West Coast, so it's a lot later for a lot of you other people out there. So I can understand it's kind of being kind of late in the day you know, for people to, to show up to. But I tell you, for me, 8.30 is a perfect time. <laughs> That's perfect. Awesome. Already get home, yeah. eight, just settle down, it's great. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, I, you know, I just had this this conversation with uh, my rep, my supplier about um, 3 8 Starfire. Because I've been, you know, I've been ordering, you know, Starfire for my low iron, and and he's saying, yeah, we're we're out of that currently. It's going to be like a few weeks before they have it again, and you know, asked me if, what I wanted to substitute it for. So they had um, the OptiWhite was one option, and then um, Crystal Clear. Uh, I can't remember some other low iron, but I, you know, as long as I'm not trying to match something else. I don't really yeah. care, you know, as long yeah. as it's no longer. Exactly. See, that's our biggest problem as a fabricator is if we're our, on the D3 side, if we're making glass for my shower door and uh, somebody's got a five-piece custom and they chip or break and they need one replacement, you've really got to document what glass you use because the color difference is significant. Yeah. It's a big difference. Right, yeah, especially if you're putting them right next to each other. Like oh, yeah, or all part of the same shower. 
even if it was two different showers in the house in a different room, that's not a big deal. But when it's, you know, you got to remake a transom or something like that, it's a big deal. You may have to remake the whole unit. Yeah. 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 So I asked him why I had him on the line, you know, so what else, you know, is there something else that, uh, that I should be expecting shortages on? They're saying, you know, just three eighths, regular three eighths clear. Uh, starting to get dwindling. Um, he is saying matte black hardware. Yeah, matte black hardware is a. I told you guys about that. Thing. I told you about that. Get the Cerakote. Yeah. Do it uh, yourself. We, we, we're pretty good with matte black hardware, but uh, satin brass is the other hard one to get, is satin brass. But luckily, we stuck up. We have a ton of stock on satin brass, so. Yeah. Oh, hey, yeah, so along those lines, uh, you know, my my buddy uh, Trevor Nickel was, got in touch with me and asked me if anybody knows where to come up with some uh, brush bronze U-channel, I think for 3 8 BBRZ, that's brush bronze, right? Yeah. Powder coat. I don't know if you anybody can is... Powder, you can powder coat that pretty... Uh, really close to brush bronze believe it or not um we're doing a grid shower right now and we just match brush bronze with a powder coat so we're doing a brush bronze gridded shower so so how are you getting the kind of brush stroke thing uh we're not really getting the brush stroke but you're not going to see it that much in a u channel so anyways so it's, uh, i mean that's an alternative to, to the waiting it's it. true or go to clamps if you can if the guy needs some i might have some Really? Yeah, I keep awesome. them next time. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll let them know that. I'll send them your way. I mm -hmm. might have some Sierra Lawrence one, and I might have some of our own channel that was done that way. Fantastic. That'd be cool. See, that's what I'm talking about. You know, this is exactly the sort of just invaluable, yeah. um, you know, resource. You know, where, where else could you find something like that? And that was another kind of topic on the list was just, uh, you know, any material suppliers out there that maybe we don't all know about. So a little more obscure company um, that we can go to alternatively to, to find stuff like that. Do you guys have any leads on something like that? Some of that I would use, I would private message each other. Um, some of these guys are small, they can turn off stuff, but they can't take 1,500 people, you know what I'm saying? So if there's a particular need, it, can, it should either inbox you or me or Brandon or, you know, Bob, any of the other guys, Billy, that uh, are available to answer questions. A lot of us have those little contacts that we've built over the years. I just would hate to give out some guy's name and, you know, somebody listening to this rebroadcast is, might do one shower a year or whatever get involved in that very insightful yeah, yeah good good thinking so yeah you can always reach out to us you know we're we're all very available and we're you know online pretty frequently so you can just you know whether it's bill or, or brandon or myself tim even even bob probably he'd try to help you if he could of course he would <laughs> billy Britt, of course he's like he's always waiting in the wings man put me in coach Give me there. <laughs> so, Chris, I know you have a 3D printer, right? Yes. I don't well, know I've, how got, many... I've got a few. You got a few. <laughs> Good. I don't know how many other guys do, but I've been playing with trying to design some custom handles, something different that, you know, get away from the portals and the, you know, Sarah Lawrence handle, just something unique and different that, so we we have a research and development center that has a couple of 3D printers also. And I do a couple of prototypes, but I was wondering if any one of you have used maybe a, a hardware company like Baldwin Brass that makes door handles, um, colonial hardware, just some unique shower door handles. No, I never maybe had a different industry. I've never done it, but I've been thinking of it. I've been thinking about it for years to like have your own unique handle that you put on all your shower doors. When someone saw it, they knew that was 
a GPS yeah. shower or my shower or whatever, but yep. just never got around to, to doing it. Yeah, the way I wanted to do it was design the standoffs and then just buy tubes to cut off and go into those standoffs. So that way, when you stock it, you're only stocking the standoffs and a box of tubes that you can cut with a pipe cutter that goes into the standoffs. If you know what I mean by a standoff would be your handle. And, and then you just use back-to-back -back mounting or a flat uh, fastener for a single-sided. But it would be so much easier for inventory to carry, you know, three or four standoff styles that are unique and then maybe two or three tubular handles that are different. Some with a scroll in it or something with rhinestones in it if you wanted to give some bling. Yeah. Oh, that'd be a good idea. It'd be, it'd be pretty cool because if you're doing your own fabricating like I do, then I could make them a 13-inch handle or a 15-inch handle. It doesn't cost me any more. Yeah, exactly. You just cut the tube longer. So it's not like this special order where you're waiting three years to get it from somebody. You know, oh, Bortles has a product like that. They have a, a towel bar that's adjustable. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of a takeoff. This is one I've been playing with. It's just that this is 3D printed, so it's plastic. Right. right now it's a prototype, so it's kind of flat. And then we just put a bunch of like rhinestones in it. Bedazzled it. Yeah, bedazzled. It just bedazzled it. That's it. But it, you know, it's funny. When they come into the showroom, we were playing with this with a couple of customers. They loved it. It's loved pretty it cool. Because the stones are black, so it goes with the matte black and then just a little zing here. So if this was in chrome or polished nickel or something, it would really, it would really jump. So we started playing with stuff like that. And now we're going to start playing with the, uh, the standoffs. But I didn't know if anyone else was trying something like that. Um, so, Bill, do you Bill. have a source for like a brass, man, you know, manufacturer? Yeah, I got a couple. Uh, brass or aluminum, you can do either. You don't have to go real brass with certain finishes. And can they do like how short of a run can they do? Well, that's going to be that's always the problem. You got to give them enough to make it worthwhile because if you're just doing five, then it's all the tooling and the setup and everything. It's very expensive, yeah. doesn't make sense. But we got 1,500 members and you want to, you know, do uh, 2,000 of these, it could happen. I, what I'd really like to see is a lot of this stuff made in the States. I really want to go to a hardware show and have find a hardware manufacturer in the States instead of worrying about this supply chain coming from Asia. There was a company when I was in the, at the Vegas, the last Vegas one, uh, Glasgow, that had was a company that was American made. And I can't remember who it was. And I, their, their hardware was expensive, but they made shower door hardware in the States. And I couldn't, I can't remember the name. Really? Their hinges were, their hinges were beefy, good looking hinges. I just, for the life of me, I can't remember who it was. All right. I, I need this, the dilly on this. Now I was told by my CRL rep that the CRL hinges are made in LA. Is that accurate or not? No, I don't think yeah. so. Even all their boxes say made in China on them, their little stickers are on them. Yeah. So I don't get it. I, I wish somebody from Sierra Lawrence was on this because they're telling me that it was made and plated and everything right here in the States. And I had a hard time no. believing that. No, I got a box that said they're made in Vietnam. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. I think they have, I think just like everybody, like they have different um, companies all over the world where they, they get supplies from. You know, so. oh, yeah. you know, I, I'm, Billy just sent an inbox. He says he doesn't think anything is manufactured in L.A. And I, I don't know. I, I got offered to go and take a look at their manufacturing. And I might take them up on that because they, they were telling me they were making base shoe for railings there. They they have, a, I can I can see that for extruding aluminum, but not like making hinges and stuff. I can definitely see because PRL extrudes their own aluminum in LA. So yeah. They're 
Yeah, so I, I'm really kind of wondering, but yeah, I was told they were doing your handles, their hardware, everything in LA. And boy, I, I had a hard time believing that. So unless somebody knows here, I might take them up on that offer to go out and take a look at it. I had a, I had a job a while back where I had to have custom towel bars, everything made with stainless steel backing plates and they were all made in LA. They were made there, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, we, we mounted uh, grab bars in a shower on, on um, back painted glass, so they had to be mounted to the wall where you grab them and they didn't fall off. Yeah. We had a stainless steel backing plate made that was bolted to the studs and stuck out so far to where the, uh, the towel bars would stick onto it, and they were all custom made for my you know, specifications. Did they somebody do, did somebody on this group talk about a handle that was put on with a magnet? Hmm. Instead of holes in the door, it, the magnet was strong enough, like on the fish tanks, where they have the, you know, if you want to clean the fish tank, you put the sponge on the inside with a magnet, you can wipe yeah. the glass. I mean, I hadn't heard of it, but I can imagine it. I mean, those, those, those magnets are strong, strong for the fish tanks, I know that. They so. do. Yeah, I mean that like that clamp assistant tool. It's like the magnets are so strong. If you're not careful, I mean they'll they'll pinch you, like really good. Just be careful. Yeah, okay. talking from experience. <laughs> yeah, well the first ones when I first started making them, the magnets were even stronger, and I like I hurt myself with those magnets. It's like I had I had like customers complain. It's like man, these things they're hurting my <laughs> they're hurting my employees. <laughs> So I had to kind of back them off a little bit, you know? It's a little too gung-ho. They're We've still plenty strong enough. <laughs> all right, so I got another question for the group. I'd like all input. How do you answer a question if somebody's got a shower that they want their door to swing in only? Um, we don't, we just tell them it's code. Like it has to open out for a code, like fire code because at least out here, and I know in a lot of places, it's code. If someone falls and has a heart attack and they fall up against the glass and you can't get them out because the door only opens in, you got to break the glass to get it in or try to get them out of the way. So well, I always tell my customers the door is a double acting, double action door will open in and out. So, but it does have to open out per code. So we can't put a strike on it where it only opens in. Anybody else? Yeah, so kind of, you know, the, the way to kind of skirt this issue is kind of like, it's kind of like the old handrail cap thing. Yeah. It's like, you know, put the cap on, and when I leave, you know, if you take it off, it's your business, you know, it's like I can't stop you from doing that. Uh, and, you know, you can do the same thing with a, with a strike on a door, you know, and say, like, look, you know, I'm going to put the strike on here so it will only open out. Um, and then, you know, if after you leave, they pull that thing off and turn it around so that it only opens in, that's, that's on them, you know, yeah. can't stop them from doing that. Okay. Do you know if there's any exceptions that you know of why or when you could have it swing in only? Nope. None. 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 Okay. So from what I heard, it was a square footage of the pan like brandon said if somebody had a heart attack was laying there and the fire department has to get into them but they say if the square footage of the floor is and i forget what the number is if it's larger than that then you can because they can still push the body by moving. i've heard something i've heard something like that before um something similar to that like if it's a very large shower or if the shower had two accesses as long as one went out, the other one could go in only. So if it was a his and her, you know, entering from two sides of the bathroom. So the reason they may want one in only is either they don't want the water dripping on the floor when it swings out, or there's something on the outside obstructing the door from swinging out where it was inconvenient for them. But if it swung in, it was fine. So the answers that I was able to get was one is if there was another access in that shower from the other side, that that would be okay. But the second one, it was a square footage amount that if the pan was a certain size, you could do it and justify it. 
because the second reason was for scalding. If you turned on your water and it only came out hot, your initial reaction is to run out. But if the shower is big enough, you can certainly just move to the side and get out of that hot water spray. So it had to do with the either the cubic footage or square footage of the shower pan. And yeah. so I just didn't know if anyone was that sharp on the code. And I heard it was a California fire marshal code that they yeah. used for the code reference. Well, well, well there's I'm another code. Right now. Out here in California, you can do everything by the code. You can have a stamp set of plans. And the building inspector comes along, so if he doesn't like it, they'll tell you no. It's a discretion of the building inspector. Hold on. You know, I can't hear you with that phone ringing. Yeah. Hang on. That's PG calling me. My power's out. But no, we've we've gone on to projects that have been approved, stamped, made storefront frames, put them in, in between steel columns. And the building inspector came along and said they have to be uh, sheetrocked. And they fought it and they lost. So we had to cut all the frames down to fit in between the, you know, the sheetrock. So now, I don't know if I lost something. What you're saying is that playing off of the door swinging in or out, or just something different? You're just, talking just about the, just the just the building department. It's up to it's the discretion of the building inspector of what how he reads the the code. Okay, so it's up for interpretation, is what you're saying. He may interpret it one way. Yeah, right. you know, and in California, we have like local codes. I mean, there's so there's like there's the state codes, but then each city can have their own. Yes. Well, no, we we follow the uniform building code, whatever they adopt mm -hmm. out here. And this building we did, it was a library for the Monterey Institute of Foreign Studies. And everything went through the building department, stamped, approved. We built the frames, ordered the glass, put the frames on the second floor, and he comes along and says, you got to sheetrock all that stuff. And the mm -hmm. contractor lost, you know, but it was his interpretation of the code. So is that, that, did you lose then, or did the contractor have to pay you for the they, second amount of work? They had to pay me because I had to take all the frames back, yeah, a half inch off, and then we took them back and spread them and put the glass in. Sure. Before we put the frames in. Okay. Because whoever goes along now and wants to change that glass ain't going to get it out. <laughs> <laughs> So I got paid for it. You know, we had stamp approved shop drawings and everything. Yeah, I've heard so, stories where the fire marshal actually, the fire marshal actually supersedes the building department. Uh, yeah, they can. It's crazy. I, when I lived in San Diego, there was, uh, they built this building and they had, they had stamp plans from the city that it was approved. And I forget how many stories it was. The building was done and then the FAA came in and said your building's too tall in the area that it's in and they oh. had to take a floor off the top of the building after it was complete. Wow. Oh, I've, yeah. flown in, I've flown into San Diego. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Right? You're right over the tops of those buildings, man. You're in between buildings. First time I flew in there, I go, whoa. Yeah, no kidding. Pretty cool place to fly into, that's for sure. It is. And then the guy and then that plane was taken off, so we took off again. That was a lot of fun. Have you um speaking of codes, there's a code uh that says when you open up a shower door, you can't have a light switch uh in the way of the shower door when it opens up. It can't if the shower it has to be outside of the shower door when it's open uh, 90 degrees. It can't be behind the shower door. Uh no, I can't when I I heard you can't reach the switch from the shower, so it's got to be more than three feet away. Is that what so it that, is? So okay. that you can't stand yeah. in the shower and get wet and touch it. So yeah, it doesn't really walk. matter the swing of the door. It's just that you can't touch the switch yeah. from the shower. Yeah, you just can't open and touch it. That makes sense. Wow, I hadn't heard that one before. Yeah. 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 That so really shouldn't, door. that shouldn't affect the shower door guys at all. What it does no, you know what will you know what could yeah. affect shower door guys is when you 
Um, there is a code like out here in Phoenix, Phoenix, so each city has a different code that tells you. So if it's a three by five shower and you're doing an inline, that you have to have a minimum of 32 inches inside the shower. So depending on where you put your glass, um, that could affect the code. But a lot of times you have no choice and it's going to be smaller than it is. I've never heard of anyone ever getting called out on it, but there is a code that tells you a shower has to be so deep. Um, and you're, you're limited on some of these houses and remodels, but, and a lot of times you put the shower in the center of the curb, but it could bite you um, if you don't push it out to give enough room if you can, so. Yeah, yeah, there's one in California too. Mm -hmm. For that. That's Bill, do you have a, do you have a minimum, minimum uh, door opening in Florida? Uh, door opening, but not the depth of the shower. Yeah. The, and believe it or not, the minimum is 20 inches of a clearance for a door. We wow. have 22, and I think California is 22. 22 as well, right? 22. And it's actually, it's weird. It's in the plumber's code, I think, yeah. um, mm -hmm. which is weird. Right. The plumber's code also has something about the shower head not facing the door or something. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen one of those. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Never <laughs> happens. <laughs> Yeah. Or you go, or or you go out and you do a corner shower, and they have the toilet to the left of the fixed panel. So you go in there and you put your glass in. And the guy comes along. Well, I let's see it. I think the bus had what, thirty six or thirteen inches, or thirty or thirty six clearance on a toilet. To uh, so it would be. So the guy mentioned, "Why don't I have? I don't have enough room for the toilet." Because where you set the glass, it takes yeah. up the, the clearance. Yeah, because there's a code for that, too, how much space there needs yeah, to be on the side of the toilet. 30 inches. Yeah. I think it's 30 inches. 30 inches overall? Like 15 yeah, inches? Like like 12, 12 from each side or something like that. 12 to center or something like that, or 15 to center on each side. Maybe it's yeah. 15 to center, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, again, so it's, a plum, it's a plumbing code. It's not, it's not our code. Mm-hmm. No, it's not on us, but you know they don't tell you that. You go set the door, and they go, "I don't have no room." So, so what happens? The plumber gets his license revoked. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you you put your glass in, and the plumber gets his license revoked. Yeah. yeah. So they yeah, the most uh, that's most interesting. Of goes by, you know, nobody complains about it. Yeah, I've been pretty fortunate not to have run into, of course, I don't do nearly the number of shower doors you guys do, I mean, but um, yeah, I've been pretty fortunate not to run into any major issues. Or you, go out to, too much. Or, or you go out to a million dollar house in Carmel, and here's a shower, and they've only got an 18 inch opening. Yeah. You know, you put it in, and nobody complains about it. That's probably because it's not inspected. No, it's a brand new house. Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. We just did work in this uh, $25 million house out here. We came in behind the glass company. They got fired off the job. Um, we did all these custom mirrors for them, but the shower doors, 90 degree shower doors um, to, the, to the lid, but they did a sleeve over corner clamp Somehow, I don't even know how they, they like put, they had to lean the corner out to put it on to be able to slide it back in to get it up there. But then on the bottom, they did a, a glass to glass corner clamp on the bottom with a sleeve over on the top. And when it was full height with no channel on the top or clamps or anything, I don't know what they were doing. Like, what, I, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Dude, it was a, it was a nightmare. See, those are the pictures I wanted to see last week. I, I think you know? I have, I think I have a picture somewhere on that. When you run across somebody else's stuff, like that one I posted with the toilet there, like what were they thinking? You know, those, those pictures would be good to look at and start thinking about what other guys are doing and possibly hurt our industry. I mean, some of the stuff I've gone out and fixed is. Yeah. <laughs> look at that. Yeah, I see that. Isn't that crazy? Like corner clamp all the way to the lid and then a glass of glass on the bottom. Like, yeah, why? And then what's like, I don't know, the frosting like makes no sense. That 
there's a one right next to it. And it's a toilet room that looks exactly the same. And it's the frosting is that low to the toilet room. So it's like you sit down and like your chest is all exposed yeah. in the toilet room. <laughs> that is bizarre. Pretty and a $25 million house too. Like crazy. A designer probably figured that out, right? Mm-hmm. So the, like they did uh, the horror story of that house. They had a curved glass railing, and the glass guy ordered it out, came in wrong. And then so he went to the contractor and was like, hey, I can't afford to eat this. Like, you guys make more money than I do. Like, and so he didn't want to pay for it. He ended up just bailing out on the job and not finishing the job. And they ended up just doing a metal and wood railing instead of glass because, and they were just like, you know what? We can sue him, but he has nothing. Like he's just, yeah, our mistake for using him. But <laughs> crazy. Some of the people out there that listen to that name. Hey, last time we were talking, Brandon, you said you had uh, ongoing litigation about a certain job. Did that get clarified yet? Yeah, so it uh, is settled. Um, I was being sued for one point six million for a railing job, and they settled um, two days before jury selection for one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Wow, that's a little insurance, insurance insurance paid for it. It was, the guy was just a scam artist. It was it was my fault early on the way I did the railing. I tried to make a customer happy, um, yeah. and it bit me in the ass. But it wasn't. It was he was trying to hit me for a million dollars in stigma damages is what it was because of the house leak. And he said, now he's this, this of a $5 million house. He's like, I'm going to lose a million dollars on it for selling it because I had a leak and all this. And he got some BS, BS real estate guy saying that he's going to lose that much money. The guy wasn't a broker, wasn't legally allowed to say it. So the guy rebuttaled his statement to, in the depot and all kinds of stuff. And, um, in, it was leaking from other places. He used Curdy Schluter on his exterior deck, and it's meant for interior. So the one of the um, Schluter reps went out there because it's not a self-sealing membrane. He can't use it on the exterior deck. All, he flashed it wrong. He ran the stucco paper up, and he dived his deck into the stucco paper. So anything that ran off between the stucco was going between the stucco paper and the house and not between the stucco and the stucco paper. So it was, just, it was built wrong. And the funny thing is, is, he, he owns a national flooring company that does tile, and he's the one who tiled his deck like his company did, and they did it wrong. Like, Of course. So, But I got wow. drug into this, and it was just – it lasted for almost three years. And the, the shittiest part about it is my building is right across the parking lot from where he had his company, so I saw, I see, saw him all the time. And he'd come over and try to threaten me and stuff, and he's like this little five-foot-one, like 110 pounds, like – chain smoker <laughs> like uh, wow. i just he he came over and threatened to sue me because my guys looked at him wrong one day he's like if one of your guys look at me wrong again i'm gonna sue you i'm like sue me for what he's like i don't know i'll drag you through court i might do what you gotta do but you're barking up the wrong tree <laughs> wow so yeah he's uh he just his record like he just sues everybody great so, he did time. He did time for tax fraud um, and all that. Like, couldn't bring it up though because it was over a certain amount of time. Um, couldn't bring that up, but it was just, it's crazy. Wow. But so you, you learned. It, get... it was a good. It was a good. Uh, it was a good learning experience for sure. Because I won't touch the railing unless everything is covered. Like it has to be perfect. It's not worth it. So, so this brings up another question. Chris, do you have anything else to talk about that I'm cutting you no, off? No, you're doing good. Keep going, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we may have talked about it in private on another occasion, but there's companies out there, you know, years ago, there wasn't too many people that could afford their own tempering ovens. And a lot of guys are starting to temper their own glass, but they're not getting it certified by SGCC. Now, if you do a big job like a hotel or something like that, the architects generally require you to meet the ANSI regulations. And it gets stamped on the glass before you temper it. They put the bug in the glass, right? You always look at the bug. But 
you know that you can legally do glass without getting that SGCC certification. You can self-certify. However, there's no verification that it was done accurately. They're just trusting you to do it yourself and there's no recourse. But if somebody that self-certifies, if their glass breaks and somebody gets hurt, the builder gets, gets nailed for negligence for using something that's not certified by the SGCC. The architect would get sued if he signed off on it, that he approved it. But yet I see, I've gone to hotels and I'm looking for the tempering bug and it's not there. There's zero there, which means the building inspector never should have passed it when he went to inspect it. So I don't know how much you run into that, if at all, but it, it's a big deal. There's guys out there tempering or not getting it certified. I've never, oh, I've never been into it. I've heard about it though. And I remember you, you spoke about it a little bit before, but what do that, you have the third party come in and certify you every so many years or what? No, every six months you send a whole mess of glass out to them and they break it. They, you know, every day when we temper the first batch through the tempering furnace, you break off. We do a, a, a two by two square in a box and you break it, you cut it, you, uh, you draw a two by two inch square and then you count the number of pieces that it breaks into into that two by two square and you log it. And you can adjust the size of the break based on the RPMs of your ventilator, how quickly you cool the glass. And there are, again, there are people that don't send it out to a third party. So therefore you're risking your business if you're buying glass from somebody that doesn't certify or have it done by a third party, that they're doing it right. There's no backup certification. And we ran across it where somebody wanted us to repair some doors at our hotel. And there was no tempering logo on there at all. Not even a bug that says tempered. But a bug that simply says tempered doesn't fit the ANSI requirements. So just because you see a bug that says tempered doesn't mean that it's certified and passes that requirement. You're taking a huge gamble. But I didn't know if anyone ran across that at all. Yeah, I run across that all the time. But I think it's just mainly people that buy stop doors from China. You know, they're really cheap. So they just go and make the fixed panel of the door. You know, they just order it. And then usually you get, you know, the 26, 28, uh, you know, width by 72, 78, 80. So like we certify all of our, all of our glass through SGCC as well. But I run across that all the time, you know, with doors made from China. So then you get a cause of, you know, the door that is spontaneously broke as well. So then, you know. Now, with that being said, though, even though we certify all of our glass through SGCC, last year, maybe because of the COVID, well, they wanted to do a, a virtual certification, which, you know, you just send the paperwork and you still need to send the glass to the lab. But, you know. I didn't really like the fact that they just wanted to do the virtual certification rather than actually come to the plant, look at the glass, look at the record. So, you know, even though it's certified, I think they could do better at that. They can do better than that. Yes. <laughs> but at least that point is better than not. I, I've seen guys just put a bug on there that says tempered. And yeah, I've seen that all the time. Yeah. That's it. And, so and I, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Bill. No, go ahead. What were you hey, it, should, it should say it should say uh, a lot of them says the manu the manufacturer right, and then ANSI Z nine one or whatever. Yeah, that, that, nine that date, seven. Right? Yep, and then a date. Um, sometimes they have a date on it, right? Yeah, but you'll also see what type of glass. So it'll say uh, like three eight. Yeah. Uh, transparent. So th there would be a code in there. Yeah. You mm -hmm. you means unlimited size. Yep. And if you look under the SGCC certifications online, it'll give you all the breakdown of that. And it'll tell you who's certified and who's not certified. So if you're a shopping fabricant, like if you had a big problem in Colorado and you have to go to another fabricator, yeah. that SGCC website is very powerful and very good for you. You could find fabricators in that area also, just off of their site. Absolutely. Yeah, I never thought about looking for fabricators off of that site. That's a good idea. We do check. 
we do check with who we use though on our temper bugs. And I'm surprised, Evil, that you've even uh, that you've seen that because even the Chinese stuff I've come in, and I look on your site, most of the Chinese companies are listed. So uh, somebody's importing something that's not tempered properly. If you're running into it a lot, so who's ever selling that? I know uh, there was a guy named Carmine up there, but he always did things right, as far as I know. Uh, I think he's AGC glass, but you know, Carmine's been in the business a long time. He knows his stuff. So I doubt if it would have been him. I'm just wondering who that source would be for selling stuff like that. So Bill, when you tamper, I heard if you run so much tampering, you know, it takes so much energy to temper glass. Yeah. And I've heard a company that did it and they checked their energy that they use and it wasn't enough to temper the glass properly. Have you ever done that? Come across that situation? No, I, I haven't because our ovens, you have to have enough energy to, heat. I mean, they're like a giant toaster, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, and, it looks like a shake, you have a shake and bake, I call it. And, and you've got to get it up to temperature. The, the glass has to arrive at the temperature for the formula for whatever thickness it is. And then you yeah. have to rap, rapidly cool it, right? So if you don't have enough energy, it can't get up to temperature. Right. And it's all math. Um, I mean, you can figure out exactly the amount of energy it takes yeah. to get, you know, that material yeah. to that temperature, the amount of energy it takes to run the fans to get it back down to temperature. I mean, you can yes. figure that yeah. out, you know, to the right down to the kilowatt or whatever. Yes, you can. Sure. But I think I what Tim's saying is on somebody that maybe if you are on those, uh, those rolling energy things where you just, they're not giving you enough power in the building. Yeah, in California, they temper at night. Yeah, we do too, only to keep our rates down. Yeah. yeah, e yeah. Even you do that also, do you have a time of day for your demand? We actually temper it in the morning and maybe this is just uh, a feedback that I have because we also have the Mappy tempering oven. Yeah. So yeah. when they first came to do, to install the, uh, the oven, you know, they do all the tests and they only run it for three days. And, you know, I don't know, like maybe they were working for like eight hours a day and our electric bill came for like almost $6,000 uh, just for like three days. So I love the Mappy oven, but what they didn't tell us and, you know, after paying like $20,000 worth of electric bills, we figured out is that you can actually increase the temperature gradually, let's say like at 15% 15 of the of the coal capacity, and then just increment the uh, the heat like 50 degrees at the time, and the electric bill went like substantially, substantially lower. So I don't know how you guys are heating up the oven, but if you gradually uh, increase the temperature, your demand goes way low, and you're gonna That's save right. thousands of dollars on the oven. We did our first our because first. of the peak hours, right? The so peak, it's, it's just a peak you know, from going over a certain it, amount. Yeah, but it's just the demand. So when you turn the oven on, like this, these ovens, you can turn it to seven hundred degrees. Let's say if you're doing like you know like uh, half an inch glass, I think it's like six hundred and fifty. So you can just turn it on, where it's gonna be completely heat up in fifteen minutes. So the demand is so much that you know the electric bill is really it's high. Expensive. Yeah. It's really expensive, but if you heat it up little by little, at least with this Mappy oven, you can do that. I think with the other brands, you cannot really do that. So Mappy has an incredible oven. It's just, uh, I think we, with other ovens, you actually have to keep it on, you know, 24 hours. So we can actually shut it down and and turn it on. And, you know, it's not that expensive, but that's something that they didn't tell us. And that costs a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. So I'll back it up for all you guys. So what if we still had Tom held tempering? What would we do? If we still had what? Tom held tempering. I don't know. Tim, you need to get a new microphone, man, because I can't understand oh. what you're saying half the time. Yeah, I can't either. It's called Tom held tempering, where they would clamp it. You've never seen that? It would no. go vertically through an oven. And would come out well, I think it means like chemically, chemically tempering. No, no, it was a furnace. It's before they had the 
when they did it were horizontal. This was vertical up and down here. And they'd, they'd put clamps on the glass and it would be hung and it would go through the furnace. And when it came out, you had the top edge was all up and down because it had all these little dimples in it. I have only seen have videos, only of, seen that. videos <laughs> of that. That's back in the old days, huh? Wow. That was back in the old days. Before they went to the, Yeah. <laughs> So, and I know one other thing that nobody mentioned is that, um, I think that's Tim, yep, it is, um, is that, you know, a customer can request no logo on, on a tempered piece of glass. So, sometimes if you're not seeing a logo, it could be that the customer requested no logo and uh, you just have to, you know, produce the paperwork that shows, you know, guarantees, yeah, this is tempered, you know, according to the That's right. proper specifications. Has, it, has anyone, has anyone ever ran into that where a customer requested no logo on a shower door? Oh, yeah. I've never personally ran into that on a shower door, only on like little door lights, you know, or shelves. For years, we used to do that. When I used to order, when I was in Massachusetts, we order from Old Castle out of Perrysburg. We would always request no logo on any of the glass because Customers were complaining the bug was at the top, it was on the wrong side, and the fabricator wouldn't stand by it. So we would order it without a logo and request the paperwork to go along with it. And we'd have to keep a copy of the paperwork for the building inspector. Got you. But yeah, you can also buy uh, an indicator. It transmits some light. And yeah. the re re once the glass goes, sorry, the light goes through the glass, it gives you a reading. So we have one of those pieces uh, are those uh, equipment, sorry, where you can just look through the glass and then it, it indicates whether or not the glass is tempered too. Polarized sunglasses help too. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Polarized sunglasses. Probably the same principle that that little device uses. I think EDTM mm -hmm. makes a, a meter for that. Yeah. They, they make a few different meters. One is light transmission. One was for uh, the shower guard coating. And there's a okay. few other meters that they made. Yeah. Yeah, it used to be like, it's been a long time, like at least 10 years ago when that was kind of the thing. People wanted no bug on their, on their shower doors. And yeah. they would ask for that. It was pretty, pretty common, but that hasn't been, like I say, at least 10 years. So it must have yeah. been just kind of a fad that was going on back then. But you know, the average person doesn't know all of what's written in that bug. How much information is The there? average glazer doesn't know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's why I thought it'd be good on this group. You know, you get somebody from SGCC and they'll go through the whole thing, their whole process and what that means. You should invite okay. someone to come and, and host one of these for us. I'll make a call for you. I, I will. Yeah. And all you guys out there, I mean, if, you, if you're thinking of somebody who you think would be interesting, you know, to, to come on here and they're not actually in the group or they wouldn't normally show up, let me know, you know be fun to have them as a guest even if it's somebody who's like kind of a little bit outside of what we normally do um yeah keep it interesting well, that was a good talk huh? that yeah. went by Look, today, logan huh? showed up <laughs> logan awesome. good to see you my brother i was a little late to the party but on the bug note man we have had some people complain about the bugs on our showers for sure here uh, and not only that, but True Light, our vendor that we use, is like notoriously bad for just putting the bug pretty much wherever they want, uh, any corner, regardless of of our notes or or any preference that we send. Uh, and so, like, maybe that's something we should look into. Uh, but I don't know if it really, would really be worth our time to have to play with that. But maybe the, we'll see. On the ones they're complaining, do you have to do it over, or do you buff out the bug? Uh, and so, uh, realistically, more often than not, you know, it is what it is, is what we tell them, because, uh, I mean, as far as we are concerned, that pretty much is what it is. I mean, we don't really want to have to deal with the excess paperwork or whatever else is on the back end of trying to handle, you know, explaining that this is tempered, it's not a logo, whatever. Uh, and so we just tell them how it is. And we've tried to buff them out a couple, uh, but, like, really, uh, I mean, it's only been a select few. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite a bit of work to buff one out, huh? And True Light, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, they have the really dark logo too, right? This is pretty prominent for sure. You can get a good eye on it from a, a distance, yeah. 
Yeah, it's always those guys, man, who put the bug at the top. Uh, <laughs> yeah, all the time on a 90 right in the corner, too. Yeah, they're pretty bad about it, but it is what it is. Feel your pain, man. <laughs> well, all right, all right, everybody. Thanks for showing up, man. That was a lot of fun. We'll see you yeah. next Wednesday. <laughs>